Week, we're talking about knowledge while we take a look at the story of someone who straight talk sent them straight to jail. Hey, I'm Amaya. And I'm Zeke. And we're talking about knowledge, which is learning something new so you can be better at whatever you do. Okay, so what are we learning about today? Not what? Who? Oh, great. We have a guest? Yep. Today's guest is a super scholar. In fact, their brain power is about twice what a normal person has. Wait, I know who we're talking about. That famous person who won that quiz show like 70 times? Nope. Oh, uh, an NASA engineer. Nuh-uh. Well, uh, some professor? Oh, my uh, science teacher, Miss Grimes, is like a genius. Maybe, but that's not who we're talking to. All right, who is this super brain? Ta-da! Wait, we're talking to a... A baby? Well, a toddler. She's my niece, and her name is Eloise. No offense to your niece, but how is she a mega brain about anything except goldfish? Actually, toddlers are incredible. Two-year-olds have twice as many brain connections as adults. Wait, seriously? Mm-hmm. A toddler's brain produces more than one million neural connections every second. Because these connections are where learning occurs, they allow a two-year-old to learn faster than anyone else. That's amazing. I know, right? Okay, let's talk to this little genius. Can you tell me what's your name? Eloise. Eloise. How old are you, Eloise? Three. 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 That, that is, is a big number. Can you tell me what's your favorite color, Eloise? Orange. Oh, orange. Uh, mm. I love orange it's an too. It's awesome color and I love orange. What a coincidence. That's awesome. I love orange. What's your favorite animal? Nay. Nay? Nay, nay. 
Nay, nay. Naming oh, her is, horse. Yeah, that's the name yes. of your horse. <laughs> that's so cool. What's your favorite food? Pancakes. 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 Mm. I love pancakes. Do you like do you like syrup and waffles with it? What's better, pancakes or waffles? Oh, be very waffles. careful how you answer. Oh, waffles! waffles. <laughs> what do you want to be when you grow up? A farmer. A farmer. A farmer. That is awesome. <laughs> hmm, Eloise, can you tell me what's your opinion in the current state of the world? Mommy. Mommy? Mm, okay, makes yeah. sense. You should ask her and stuff. Mm -hmm. Wise words. Wise words. <laughs> hey, Eloise, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for joining us. <laughs> Do you want to go get a lollipop? Yes. <laughs> Bye. Bye. I still have so many questions. <laughs> You're not the only one. It's time for the story before the story. Today, we're in the first book of the New Testament, Matthew. But before Matthew, in the very beginning, out of a deep, deep love, God made an amazing world. But when people turned away from God, the world was broken. God made a plan to draw people back into a relationship. So at the right time, God sent a tiny baby to be born in the small town of Bethlehem, God's very own son, Jesus. God sent another special baby named John to a priest named Zechariah and his wife Elizabeth. Even before John was born, an angel told his father Zechariah that John would point people to God, which is exactly what John did. And that's where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everyone. John was a uh, unique kind of guy. He wore rough clothing made from camel skins and for food he scavenged crunchy locusts and ate honey from wild bees. John preached to crowds by the Jordan River, calling them to turn back to God. Then he dipped them into the waters and drew them up again as a sign of their changed hearts. I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I am will come. I'm not good enough to untie the straps of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Then Jesus himself came down to the Jordan River and asked John to baptize him. It is right for us to do this. It carries out God's holy plan. As Jesus emerged dripping from the waters, heaven opened up. John saw God's spirit rest on Jesus as a dove. They heard God's voice from heaven. This is my son, and I love him. I am very pleased with him. If John had any doubts about who Jesus was, it seems they would have been washed away in that very moment. I mean, he heard God's actual voice. Soon after, John pointed to Jesus and cried out, Look, the Lamb of God, he takes away the sin of the world. After 40 days in the wilderness alone with God, Jesus began to gather followers and to teach and heal people. John gladly pointed his own disciples to follow Jesus instead. I am not the Messiah. I was sent ahead of him. He must become more important. I must become less important. Now, John didn't stop his own teaching, though, and he didn't sugarcoat the truth, even when speaking to powerful leaders. In fact, John came head to head with Herod, the Roman appointed ruler of Galilee. You have broken God's laws. You. You locust eater, I can do whatever I want. Herod was so angry, he had John thrown in prison. John, who was used to wind and sky, was now confined to narrow walls in dim light. He heard only snatches of news from the outside when his followers were allowed to visit him. Jesus healed a woman who's been sick for 12 years. He even brought a little girl back to life. Instead of encouraging John, the news he heard began to weigh on him, especially as the months ticked by. One, two, three, four, five, six. Soon John had been behind bars for, well, maybe as long as a year. All kinds of questions and doubts began to creep into his heart, like the Rats that skittered across his cell floor at night. 
When is Jesus going to start getting rid of the Romans? What about that new kingdom that was supposed to come? If Jesus is really the Messiah, why am I still stuck here? The questions gnawed away inside of John, even though he had actually heard God's voice. He began to grow sick with doubt. Finally, John sent several of his followers to Jesus with a cry straight from the heart. John's followers found Jesus surrounded by an eager crowd. And as Jesus touched each sick person, illness dropped away. People blind or deaf from birth could see and hear in an instant. John's followers squeezed through to make themselves heard. Please, Jesus, John wants to know, are you the one who is supposed to come? Or, or should we look for someone else? Now, Jesus could have been annoyed with John for asking more questions and needing assurance. Instead, Jesus offered clear evidence of God's work. Go back to John. Report to him what you hear and see. Blind people receive sight. Disabled people walk. Those who have skin diseases are made clean. Deaf people hear. Those who are dead are raised to life. And the good news is preached to those who are poor. Blessed is anyone who does not give up their faith because of me. We don't know exactly how John responded when he received this compassionate message from Jesus, but he could know that Jesus wasn't angry or annoyed about the questions. Those words must have been a, a breath of fresh air for John. He was still in prison, but he could have the comfort of knowing that Jesus hadn't forgotten him. And then in the midst of a, of a clamoring crowd, Jesus had stopped to send a message crafted just for John. So, wow. John had actually heard God speak from heaven, and he still wasn't sure? Yeah, I mean, it's super easy to forget and start doubting no matter what we see or hear. Even when things don't go our way. Yep. But God will never get angry with us for asking. In fact, Jesus' brother James wrote this, If any of you needs wisdom, you should ask God for it. He will give it to you. God gives freely to everyone and doesn't find fault. That is awesome. So, what's our part in the story? Maybe you want to know why your grandma has been in the hospital for so long. It's totally okay to tell God how you feel about it and ask God for help. Yeah, God might not make your grandma better in the way or time you expect, but God can still give you peace in your heart. It might be that you want to know why your dad lost his job or why you have to go to a new school. Or even why you still struggle with tying your shoes. God will welcome all of your questions with love and compassion. In fact, it's okay to ask a question about anything at all. Like when your teacher had just explained something about fractions or how an engine works and your head is spinning. Yeah, I usually just slide down to my seat and hope I'll figure it out later because I don't want to make a fool of myself. But when that happens, ask. You'll be glad you did. And your teacher will be too. I think you got it. Don't be afraid to ask. See you next time. So here's the thing. If you don't understand something, ask. Hey, can we take Eloise to the park? I need to up my peekaboo game. That's a great idea. Me too. <laughs> Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See you See next, next time. time. Choose two points so that the midpoint is two. Now the slope of the tangent is approaching two, but not equal to two. So what are you, tangent? What is the slope? Okay, so if we choose two as the midpoint, then f can equal two, but it can also equal 1.9, but we need to evaluate f three. And B equals MC squared? Yes! <laughs> is this what I think it is? Oh yeah, yeah. It's the equation for the perfect peanut butter and jelly sandwich.
Mm. Isn't math delicious? You have a beautiful mind. Thank you. What do you mean? Why not how? I'm not sure I'm following. Well, <laughs> you said, you know what? And what is what? You know what? It's just a thing that people say. It's is it, Brandon? Yeah. Because there are so many other things to know. Like, do you know how? How to what? No, Brandon, no. Not what, how. Do you know how? That's the question. That doesn't make any sense. Exactly. Do you know who? I don't understand what Or you're... where. I was just asking. And I'm just asking so many questions. And one of the greatest questions of all, do you know why? Why what? No! You're impossible. It's always what with you. I'm asking why. Do you know why? <laughs> why what? It's simply why. Okay, do I know why? Currently, no. Look, I was just asking. You know what? No! We... Ah! Please welcome someone who knows stuff. Come on in, come on in. Take a seat. All right. <laughs> the what? chair is shockingly comfortable. Oh, what is this cushioning? Oh, it's sturdy, yet pliable. Hmm. Huh. Amazing. Yeah, okay, I guess so. I've never really thought about it or noticed that before. Uh, so, uh, who are you and what do you know? Well, my name is Fran Crusoe, and what do I know? Hmm, so little. So little. Oh. What do you mean? Well, there's just so much to be curious about. Like, like this chair. Sure. But like you. What, what's your name? Oh, it's Brandon. Brandon. Mm -hmm. What's your name? I'm Steven. Steven. Mm -hmm. Brandon and Steven. Yeah. See, I didn't know that before I got here today, and now I know. Okay, so how do you use this curiosity? Well, I host a game show called You Know What. Why? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why you know what? Well... You know, I thought about calling it you know how, or you know why, but I feel like before we can get to the how or the why, we have to know the what first. Oh, yes, see, that makes a lot of sense. Thank you for answering my question. Do you wanna play a couple of rounds of you know what? Does a leopard have spots? It does, we do. Oh, yeah, okay. let's play. <laughs> And welcome to You Know What, where we take you from what to you know what. Playing today are Steven and Brandon. Are we ready, gentlemen? You know it. No, I, did, I didn't know that. That's why I asked, actually. Uh, yes, I am ready to play. Awesome. And Steven. Yes, Fran. All right. My first question. What is the largest ocean in the world? Pacific. Oh, man. Really? Really what? Is that is that true? Yeah, yeah. The Pacific Ocean is the largest ocean in the world. Yeah. Wow, fascinating. Wait, you didn't you didn't know that? No, that's why I asked. Stephen gets eight hundred twenty three knowledge points. <laughs> <laughs> what, what? Next question: What are the primary colors? Red, yellow, blue. Really? Yes. Brandon, is that right? Y yes. Fantastic. 7,384 knowledge points Whoa. to Steven. Whoa. And, uh, did you know that you can mix uh, red and blue to make purple? 12 bonus points. Or uh, blue and yellow to make green? 73 bonus or points. Or red and yellow red make orange. Amazing. 792 bonus points. I am so good. <laughs> These points make no sense. Oh, they don't to really you. count, Brandon. Can't really put a point total on learning. This is the most absurd quiz show. Next question. What is the largest desert in the world? Uh, uh, the Sahara. Really? Uh, oh, don't look at me. I don't know. Me either. I, I think so. I, it sounds like a big one. What is the largest desert in the world? Get out. Get out. Antarctica is the largest desert oh. in the world? 
What? That is amazing, how? It says here, Antarctica gets less than 10 inches of rain a year, so it's considered a desert. But because it's so cold there, it's usually less evaporation than rainfall, and it turns to ice, and that's why the ground isn't dry like a traditional desert. <laughs> no way! Who what? knew? Not me. <laughs> what kind of game show is this? Uh, well, it's called You Know What, where we ask questions that I don't know. Oh. When is someone a winner? Everyone's a winner, because you never stop learning. But the game never stops, because we're always learning. Yeah, Brandon. Yeah, Brandon. It's like you don't get Thanks. it. Thanks, guys. Next question. What is the next segment of this show? It's Bible story time with Kellen. One million points! I'm so good at this! <laughs> Hey, friend. Hey, guys. What's up? What's the largest desert in the world? I want to say the Sahara, but isn't it technically Antarctica? Yes. Well done. You got a story for us today? I do indeed. Take it away. Our story today comes from the book of Matthew. It's about a person we've talked about earlier named John the Baptist. He had been telling people about Jesus coming, and he is not a typical character. Did someone say not a typical character? That's right. Hit it, Greg. Glad you came. Glad you're here. I know it's getting late, but never fear. We'll give a blow by blow of the Bible stone. Great. On the Melv Solomon story recap. Thank you, thank you. I'm Melf Solomon. Kellen's gonna do his thing, and me and my brother-in-law Greg will just pop in for some light musical support. Light. Uh, Whatever works for the story, Greg. Oh, but yeah. Okie dokie. And as I was saying, John the Baptist was described as a pretty wild guy. He was also the cousin of Jesus. But John wore rough clothes made from camel's hair and ate locusts and wild honey. Oh boy, that's got me thinking of a tune. You know the one, Greg. When you're wearing camel hair and you want something yummy, the regular fare just won't fill your tummy. An omelet won't do, not even a chocolate bunny. What you really gotta have is some locusts and honey. That's what I'm talking about, Greg. Yeah, I'm per personally more of a cicadas and syrup fella. Okay, so yeah. John the Baptist went on to baptize Jesus, and he saw the Holy Spirit come down to Jesus and knew that Jesus was the Messiah. But things didn't work out the way John expected. John was thrown into prison because he was speaking out against something the king had done. He had to wonder, was Jesus truly the Messiah? So John sent someone to go ask Jesus. Oh, you know what that means, Kellen? You got a song. Does Bologna rhyme with mahogany? No. It does if you're struggling for a lyric. <laughs> Hit it, Greg. Greg. Greg! Hey, don't pass go. Don't collect $200. Hey, you gotta lay off those late night Monopoly tournaments, Greg. Huh? Play the song. You know the one. Oh. Uh, uh, uh -huh. When times are dark and you don't know which way to turn When the life you're living you no longer can discern Don't be scared, don't be blue I'm here to tell you what to do Get yourself a pedicure At least your feet will feel good what Jesus say when John asked him what was what, Kellen? Well, Jesus replied, Go back to John Report to him what you hear and see. Blind people receive sight. Disabled people walk. Those who have skin diseases are made clean. Deaf people hear. Those who are dead are raised to life. And the good news is preached to those who are poor. Blessed is anyone who does not give up their faith because of me. Whoa, I tell you what. 
If this wasn't the only microphone I had and it wasn't prone to shorting, I would drop it. <laughs> but I gotta keep it safe. Hey, I gotta sing a song about that one, Greg. Greg. <laughs> Did I miss Christmas? Oh. Yeah, you're off by a couple of weeks, Greg. Oh. Play the song, won't you? That's the one. When you wonder who someone is, look at what they do. Their actions will tell you if they're false or if they're true. And when you think of Jesus, look at all he's done. Healed the blind, fed the poor, he's got one and only son. That's great, Melv. Thank you. You got it, Kellen. It uh, looks like we're going to go have some cicadas in syrup if you want to stop by later. I think I'm good. Your loss. See you next time. Come on, Greg. Let's go catch some bugs. <laughs> great story. It is a pretty great story. Although John the Baptist was in prison and he had some doubts, he wasn't afraid to ask the question. It's terrific. And then Jesus' answer was pretty great, too. Yeah. I really do think some people expected Jesus to be a different kind of leader, one who would take power and use strength to show who he was. But instead, he reminded John that the world he was building was a new kingdom, one that included taking care of the poor, taking care of the sick, and taking care of the people of the world that were sometimes treated unfairly. That's great. Thanks so much. My pleasure. I'll see you next time. Later. You know, I think I'm sometimes like John. What, you eat locusts and honey? No, no, I have questions. But if I'm honest, I'm sometimes afraid to ask them. Right, but questions are good. It's how we learn. Absolutely. In fact, reveal the question. What questions do you have? Maybe you have some questions about how many licks it takes to get to the center of a Tootsie Pop. Or you have questions about a subject in school you're having trouble with. You might have questions for your friend because you want to get to know them better. Or maybe you have some big things you want to know. Like maybe you have questions about God or about Jesus, just like John the Baptist. Don't be afraid to ask those questions. Yeah, you can ask God through prayer or ask an adult that you trust. You can read your Bible and it may answer some of those questions. Mm -hmm. Questions are a good thing, so ask them. Absolutely, but that's all the time we have for today. Yeah, we'll see you next time on The So-and-So Show. Oh, yeah. I know, I know what that is. It's gonna be delicious. Mm -hmm. You know what that is? What? You just said you knew what it was. Oh, motor oil. No! Mm. It's honey! Oh! Oh, that's what I use for motor oil. That seems unwise. No, no, everything's smooth and... I'll go. <laughs> <laughs> you got any guesses on what that was? Uh, I think it was, um... <laughs> I think that was a, a, a death. Or at least some sort of communicable disease. All right, well, uh, I'll avoid that one. I got me a lady.